So we want to add the code to actually do the Feng Shui with the name pipes. So here we are filling the holes with actual buffers from the name pipe one. And then this buffer will also be used when doing the alternate writes into the name pipes. So the buffers are buffer one and buffer two. So we need to initialize them. So we allocate a buffer of size prelen, and then we're going to fill it with A's, for instance. And we need to do the same for the second buffer. And in this one, we're going to just spread them with these. OK. So here we're filling holes. And now we're going to need to also alternate writes. So we can use something similar to this code but instead of using the extra count we're going to use the actual count that is passed as an argument which is the actual count here because that's the one we want to create holes for and we want to alternate the right so we want to do it for both the, the first name pipe and the second name pipe And so then we have code to actually create the holes. And finally, once the hole has been created, we want to be able to reallocate an instance. So if we go back to an instance pray, we had some code to actually allocate a bunch of an instance that we can reuse. So this will be allocated into an instance set A. And transaction number one. Because we only have one transaction now that we are using name pipes for the spray okay so now let's build the binary and push it onto the target vm so we have attached win back to the target vm and now we're running the binary so we can set a breakpoint for the uh, main pipe allocation so we make sure to reload the module to force putting the symbols. We're getting the K process address. And we're going to set a breakpoint on this specific address, but just for that particular process. I should replace the K process address. Then we continue execution. So we can see we have allocations for the name pipes, right? So because it's quite verbose, I'm just going to break and disable the breakpoints.
So now it's telling us that it just spread a bunch of name pipe to fill the holes. So we can re-enable the breakpoints. And then continue execution. So here we're gonna hopefully have alternate pipes and actually we see that it failed, interestingly. So let's look at the actual error on the MSDN 998. So it says invalid access to memory location. So when we did the writes. So if we go back to the code. Right, so as you can see, I forgot to replace buff one with buff two. So basically what happened is when I filled the buffers, I only filled buff1 and I only allocated buff1 in the first place, so buff2 is a null pointer. So here the write file is actually taking the null pointer as an argument, so it's failing. So I need to fix that to actually have buff2. I'm just going to rerun it. So that, that's a good example of having detections when it fails, so you can actually debug the problem. So I'm just going to rebuild the binary. Okay, so I'm editing the binary now and it's telling me to set the breakpoint. So I'm going to re enable the breakpoint. Actually, it's enabled already, so that's fine. Just going to continue execution. Okay, my debugging session is a bit slow and it's not printing anything. Looks like it's hanging. And I think it's possible it's because the breakpoint I have is set on the wrong K process now. So basically I need to disable it and I need to redo the process command. Because obviously the but the K process is different because I rerun the binary. So now we can see it's printing the chunks addresses. So I'm disabling the breakpoint. So now it filled the holes, so I'm just going to continue execution again. Okay, so here one of the problem I have is that because I hit enter several times before, but I thought it wasn't actually taking into account my keys, it skipped the steps. So I wasn't able to analyze the actual alternative name pipe, right? So I'm just going to control C and do it again. So I'm running the binary. So I'm just going to skip analyzing the allocations to fill the holes, but now I'm going to enable the breakpoints. 
So I'm getting the kprocess address. And I'm setting a breakpoint for the first query address. Now I'm continuing the execution. And now I'm seeing the allocations for the main pipes. So I'm just going to set timer. So we can see that initially the main pipe rights are not actually adjacent. A few moments later. So as you can see, the addresses are not adjacent and it's quite slow. So I'm just going to disable the breakpoint and I'll analyze it after. So it's really slow to answer to my break. Okay. So now I'm back to the spray. So here it's telling me that it just spread all the alternative name pipe writes. So now I can break in the debugger and use the pull find command on the npfr tag. So before doing that, actually make sure that your cache has a big value. So here you can see the one FFF, so that's good. So it's faster. So we can see that we actually have adjacency for some of them, which is good. So I'm just going to wait that it prints some of them. A few moments later. Okay, so I'm going to stop the pull find command here after approximately 10 minutes. So let's analyze the layout. So we can see uh, lots of name pipe writes chunks, which is great. Again. Okay, so that's good. So if, for instance, if I take the first one, if we analyze the actual data into that, these chunks, you can see Bs. So if we look at the actual size of these chunks, we see that there are 250 hex, plus 250 gives 4A0 and so on. So if we add 250, so we have these, A's, B's, A's. So we have a pretty good layout, as you can see. Um, if we look at another area, 
which was so we looked at dd00 we looked at the second area these a's these a's these and so on. So that's good. So we have alternating name pipes. So that's exactly what we want. So then um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually free them. So we're going to continue execution. Okay, so we're creating the holes. So it's going to take a few seconds because we're creating many holes. Can see maybe bigger. And now we're done. So we can see it's telling us that it, it should have created the holes. So we're going to break in the debugger. And we're going to reanalyze the sections that we analyzed earlier. Okay, so as you can see, we have an allocated chunk for a name pipe, then a free chunk, an allocated chunk, free chunk, and so on. So that's good, that's what we wanted. And if we look at another region, like this one, same thing, we have allocated free, allocated free. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually continue execution. So we have our holes now. So what we want is we want to see the reallocation of enlistments. So we're going to use two breakpoints for that. The first breakpoint is going to be to see the allocated enlistments. And the second one is to see the allocated notification, which is the noise we want to avoid. OK. So we'll continue execution, and now we're going to reallocate the enlistments. So we can see for each enlistment allocated, there is a notification as well. So we're just going to start a timer now. So actually, I'm going to pause the timer and just break in the debugger. And what I want to see is I want to see where the enlistment is allocated. So that's good because we can see the enlistment is allocated just after a name pipe. So that's pretty good. And the notification is in a totally different region where there is no name pipe and no canisments. So that's good sign as well. If I take another one. Again, the enlistment is close to a name pipe. Okay, so I'm just gonna disable the breakpoint because they are quite slow. Um, we're going to continue execution. So now it's telling me that it has reallocated all the canisments. So I'm going to break in the debugger and I'm going to use the pull find command. But this time with tmpm. A few moments later.
Okay, so I'm going to break here to see what we have after almost four minutes. So we saw earlier that we actually had TM enlistment goes to NPFR chunks. Let's reanalyze them. So more specifically, where we had lots of calls. So it was the addresses 4B0 and so on. So we can see an enlistment close to an NPFR chunk. So we can see also that not all the free chunks have been reallocated with enlistment, but at least the TM enlistment is close to a main pipe chunk. So I'm going to analyze the other area. So again, we see an enlistment. So here it's close to a free chunk actually, which is not great because it means these two chunks will coalesce, but at least the chunk is after. So if we actually look just before that, we see another layout, which is not Best. So let's analyze now some allocated key enlistment. So we actually see it's between three chunks, which is not ideal. If we look at other. So here we have allocated enlistment close to each other, which is not ideal, except if we only free one of them. And here we have an enlistment close to main pipe. So it's it's okay-ish. It's not the perfect bank tree layout, but it's it's starting to make sense. So let's continue execution now. So one thing we can do maybe to improve the layout is to spray more extra chunks before we actually allocate the bank tree. So here I'm gonna add. 1000 just to fill all the holes beforehand and I'm going to rebuild the binary. So now I'm going to restart the binary. So be, because we know most of it works and I'm, I'm not going to set breakpoints uh, at the moment, I'm just going to do this allocations, freeing the chunks, and only when reallocating the candlesticks, I'm just going to look at them. Okay, so now we should have holes. So if I go back in the debugger and look at my breakpoints. We see I want to re-enable the rate enlistment. And notification. So now I should see where they are located. So I'm just going to break in the debugger. It may take a little bit of time to actually handle the break. So now if I look at one of the address, oh nice, so we have enlistment name pipe, enlistment name pipe. Uh, 
again, and it's the nail pipe and it's the nail pipe. So basically just by increasing filling the holes, I was able to get a, a, a way better layout, which is pretty interesting. And if we look back at the actual notification where they are located, they are in totally different region without any canisments. Okay, great. So this is this kind of result where just seeing this is pretty neat and it's gonna allow us to continue working on the exploit. Okay, thank you for watching.